06 in Bombay in bodybuilding. And those time of my life I had more money in my life. I used to go for parties. And there was time I started with the addictions. When I was into addictions, when I was in the lost areas of my life, I was li living a restless life. And sometimes even drank too much and addicted too much and went to the railway station. I was on the track waiting for a train to come and hit me. That time I saw a beggar on the platform with, without two legs. And he was just taking a shot him, hey, hey, run away from here. Why are you trying to kill yourself? I remember those days where this beggar was came in the form of Jesus to shout me and went out from there. I'm living today. So God never allowed me to die because He wanted to live a life. He wanted to live a life for others. I believe today I'm living because Christ is the Savior of my personal life. When I was small, my dad lost his job. During those periods, my dad started drinking very much. He was on to alcohol. And we were hand to mouth for survival. My mother, she got a job. She had to go to abroad for a job of a housemaid. Right from seven years, I started working in some hotels, take care of my studies. I used to work as a waiter in a hotel. And those times, sometimes I worked in different places as a worker. I started my career as a sportsman. And those time of my life, I was looking for some another career I had more money in my life. I used to go for parties. And there was time I started with the addictions, late night comings. And I was a restless without alcohol, without addiction, without smoking, without all types of addiction. There was no sleep in the night. But days were restless days, and I lost all my peace in my life. I left my home, started staying with my friends. And those long seven years, I left my family for the pleasures of the world. I know, I started remembering about my mother's word. If you win the whole world, if you lose your soul, what does it mean to you? This voice was whispering in my ears. I left my job, I left everything. My health gone bad and I was walking in the street of Mumbai. And I went to knock some of my friend's house that, uh, please help me, I'm jobless today and I had nothing with me. And when I was money, I have pleasures with you. And you are there to enjoy with me. Those friends closed the doors. Nobody welcomed me. And they all started running away from me. Those long seven years when I was away from my family, I decided to go back straight to my mother. My mother, she prayed for those long seven years. She was crying in tears. She was making rosaries. She was going to retreats. She was offering in prayers. She was doing daily mass, offering me there. She was waiting for me. My mother, standing there with open arms, she looked at me, she helped me. She never asked me where are you and what you're doing. She just told me, son, I'll cook good food for you. And she, offered me to eat something. I have a good bath. I went to sleep. Is there in the feet of your parents, the feet of the Lord. 
as I was away from the Lord and my family, and I was talking to my mother, she told me about our experience those long seven years. She was praying to Lord. She was offering rosaries, going to mass every day, making retreats, asking people to intercede for me. Many people came around her and told her, go to certain temples, there's a Baba there. Go to a mosque, those people. They'll do something and give it to you and your son will come back. And my mother told, no, I have hope in my Savior, Jesus. He's a living God. And I know one day he'll get my son back to me. And because of her intercession, because of her prayer, I came back to life. I decided I'll do the will of my father. I decided to do the will of my mother. And I started going to mass every day in the evening. I started going to confession regularly. I started going to retreats, started reading the Bible, started making my personal prayer, my family rosary, and then the transformation taking care started in my life. A friend who was inside the prison for two years, I used to go and meet him with the Bible, talk to him, and looking at me, a transformation life, he told Stanley, how do you look like now? You look different. I was talking to him about the Lord, about his saving works, about my testimony, about my life, which just changes. I left my addiction, started living with a prayerful life, forgiving others, living a holy life, serving your parents, helping the poor. He said, Stanley, I think you got mad. You look like a fool. I told him, yes, I'm a fool for Christ. I told him, you also be, change your life and become a good person. He told, okay, okay, and I started going, visiting different prisons, different places, people around, helping the poor. I know those time of life, it was very tough, but I'm living a good life not going to any places, not going to any sin, but living a holy life. And slowly after that, I started moving around and praying people around. Started a prayer ministry called Swagat. And as I was praying for people, people got healed, they get better and counseling transformed them. So I felt that God is using me to pray for people and heal them. And I started living my life, started to continue praying to people. One day, one girl from other faith, from Hindu religion, they came to me. She told, brother, please, Pray over my dad, he is not well. And doctor has told that he left all the hope. He will not survive or live more than three days. I told, okay, I'll come and pray for him. I prayed over his dad. I told, let's make a simple prayer. Say, Jesus, save me. Jesus, heal me. I want to live. From the heart, he started saying, Jesus, save me. Jesus, heal me. I want to live. And I told, I'm going from here. I just an instrument, but Jesus is the Savior. I just came and prayed over you, but Jesus is the one who's going to heal you. I'm going from here, but you call upon his name whole day and see that you'll be healed. And went back from there. Next day I got a call from this girl saying to me that whether my dad got healed, he got better, he started sitting and walking, he got all right, better and better. As she came to me for a proposal of marriage, I told her that Jesus is the Savior. She told yes, because I was working in a hospital as a nurse and the doctors were not able to save my dad. He was supposed to die. But as she intervened, as I prayed, Jesus healed my dad. So I'll start serving my dad. And I decided to give my life to Jesus and started praying for people. Rather than doing a job as a nurse in the hospital, I serve along with you and help people to get healed and come to Jesus and become a new life. Slowly, I told her to go to RCI course. 
make a Bible reading, know about Jesus, more, more about Jesus, and see how He's going to help you. And she finished that course of RCI, she got baptized, and after that we got married, we had a happy life. We started a journey, living a prayer life, and a service to people around us. One day, during Christmas time, I decided to give food to the poor in the streets of Mumbai. So I arranged a car, arranged 400 food packets, started distributing on the street. As I was distributing various signals, street, there are beggars, people around. The food packets were finished. We reached to Mahim Church at Mahim. There we saw an old man with big beard and hair was sitting near the door of the church. He told me, son, today is the birthday of Jesus. You're feeding me today. What about tomorrow? And that word got stuck to me. I felt that Jesus, from this man speaking to me, to start something for the poor people, a home for the homeless. Now the orphanage and the old age also be a part of our life and we're serving the people around us. After my transformation, I went to church every day, started reading Bible. The priest appointed me as a Eucharistic minister. He appointed me as a BCC leader. But the people around me, they were grumbling, telling me he's a sinner. And there are many people judging me. Even before my marriage life, my wife was told by so many people that he's a sinner. Why are you going to marry him? But she told that God has forgiven him. Whom am I to punish him? So God has asked me to marry him. I married him because I trust in my Lord and God has given him as a gift to me. So I felt that even though you have changed your life, even though you are a new creation, even though you are transformed, the world doesn't forgive you. And that love in my heart I took and trusted in my God and changing my life. Today, I feel that Jesus is my personal savior, my personal friend. I know those areas are very difficult, from darkness to light, from death to life. As those journey, it was difficult because people were not trusting you. We ourselves were not able to trust ourselves. We are not told the other going to change my life. I am going to come out of this addiction. I am going to live this life. Is this life is easy for me? But God was there. Jesus in every situation, in my personal life, in my family life, in my business life, in my social life, everywhere is there to help me in a different way, in a mysterious way, in a miraculous way. He helped me, he comforted me, the way I speak, the way I live, the way I meet people, everywhere the Holy Spirit counseled me. He is an advocate, whispering what I have to speak, how I have to be, what I have to do, where I have to go. Everything was guided by the Holy Spirit. You're never alone. Jesus is there. He sent His Spirit upon you. You'll never leave you alone. He is there to the ends of your life. The word came to me, do not fear, I will never leave you. Even the mother who has given you birth, who kept you in her womb for nine months, even she will forget you. I will never forget you. I will ne never leave you. I will accept you as my child. I will be there with you to the ends of the earth. And that message was accepted by me. Till today, last 20 years, I was living a different life. I feel that something which is there with me, something is there which is around me, something there all the day of my life, speaking to me, whispering to me, what I have to do, how I have to do, where I have to go, what I have to do that Jesus is there, is my personal friend, is my personal savior, is my personal healer, is my deliverer.
be getting. You can't always. This is the death. Remarkably ever. Turn back. Towards God. Rise up.